way I see it, there's two types of people. Those who spend their lives trying to build a future, and those who spend their lives trying to rebuild the past. For too long, I've been stuck in between, hidden in the dark. What was I really doing, walking in there with my bad haircut and ridiculous shirt? Was I there to make something right? Or was I just using a messed up situation to indulge myself, grasping at some desperate delusion of control? Maybe the two went hand in hand more than I cared to admit. I had stumbled into some kind of street party. This was the kind of reality Americans paid top dollar to see. Slums had become tourist attractions, places where yuppies could gawk at the endless spirit of the poor from the inside of their bulletproof buses. I felt dumb and exposed. I missed the booze. Not that it mattered, sober or drunk, I was hardly undercover. I stood out in this place like a streetwalker in a monastery. <laughs> What do you need, guys? What do you need? Uh, easy, pal, easy. Uh, look, I didn't mean any offense. Desculpa, amigo, por favor. All things considered, I was gonna have to look on this as a good outcome. I was deep in gang territory. These kids were raised hating clowns like me. Middle income ass kickers who protected the rich by shooting kids like them. First day off the sauce, and somehow I'd still ended up in the gutter. If there was one thing I'd learned since I'd been here, it was that Brazilians came out of the womb kicking a ball. And for kids like these, was there one legal chance at a ticket out of here? I'm a little lost. Perdido? Onde estu? No lugar errado, rapaz. No comprende. Uh, I need a phone, a telephone. Bora. Publico. A gente não é centro de informação turística, não. Well, they weren't gonna help me. And who could blame them? I was a dumb American in a place where dumb Americans were less popular than the clap. If I was gonna find my way out of this mess, I was on my own. It looked like there was a bar up ahead. The irony was not lost on me. I figured sobriety was no use to me dead. Hey, are you lost? In more ways than I could possibly explain. I know you. At the disco, with the gun. Yeah, you had hair back then and better clothes. Uh, Anders Dudling from Steel, North Dakota. Why on earth are you here? Well, I'm uh, looking for someone. What are you doing here? Well, we, we came to help the cause. See, after I retired, my wife, she said I had to do something. 
And well, you know, I always loved kids, so I got involved in Angels of the Hill. Oh, it's a great cause, and they're really great folk, and, well, now we come down twice a year to help inoculate the children of the favelas. Yeah, oh, it's simply wonderful giving back. Whole family does it. In fact, my, my little girl's coming in a couple of days. Aren't you afraid? Ah, I was a cop for 25 years. Hey, granted, Steel ain't San Paolo, but, you know, I've seen things. And people are the same everywhere, good, bad, and different. Listen, have you heard anything about a, a woman about 28, rich, she was kidnapped. I heard she was being held around here. No. All right, well, good luck. All right, you too. You look like you need it. I gotta get back at it. Hey, I'll say a prayer for you. Another life lesson I didn't want. Looking establishment would have a phone so I could call Passos. Either that or a gun so I could shoot myself and save these kids the bother. Hey, that telephone? Telephone, vai, lá no fundo, segue em frente. When you're stuck in a foreign country and you don't know the words for reverse charges, and you're in some lonely skin joint in the middle of some poor slum, having just had every last cent robbed from you, and you call yourself a bodyguard, then you know you're a loser. Hey, Matt. I buy you a beer. Do I know you? I don't think so. Look, if you're gonna shoot me, to make it quick, I'm a little busy. <laughs> if I was going to shoot you, I wouldn't waste a beer. Wait, come on. I'm trying to dry out a bit, so just a soda, please. Sure. Why don't you go sit down? What an for him. It's a shock for me. Bem gelado. Interesting haircut, by the way. I meant to tell you that. <clears throat> yeah, well. Wilson da Silva. Very good to meet you. Nice to meet you, I think. Although you'll forgive me if I promise never to employ you as my bodyguard. You did a great job watching after Rodrigo Branco. Fuck you. <laughs> you were set up. Bet your ass I was. Now, let me ask you something. Have you ever seen this guy? Sihano. Yep. Yeah, he's a real sweetheart. Yeah, you should put his gang out of business. But don't worry, those guys, they're a small fry. This is the guy I'm interested in. Neves. And this is his little buddy here. Milo Hegel. They work for this vigilante group. Rasha Preto. Yeah, I know him. They're very popular with right-wing politicians, like Victor Branco. Now, you see, many years ago, he helped clear some villages on a bit of land Rodrigo Branco wanted to develop. Rodrigo Branco? Yes, he did some very bad things. Anyway, have you ever seen this guy? Maybe at the stadium. I knew you were involved in that business. You know, I wanted to investigate that, but I got an order to blame it on some local street kids instead. Tell me, what happened there? Nothing. We simply went to hand over some cash to this guy's clowns for a, a ransom exchange when this guy's clowns jumped us and they shot everybody. Apart from you and your boy Passos. That's right. But we had to shoot our way out of there. <laughs> they let you go. <laughs> it's okay. It's a little weird right now. But I know that Victor Branco is involved in all this. I just don't know how or why. And I know that the Ufe are involved in all this as well, but I just don't know how or why. And you know what's gonna happen? The moment is gonna come along 
when I put all these pieces together, and at that moment, someone is gonna come along and put a bullet in my head. Anyway, listen. I think you might want this. Thank you. I'll need it. And if it's Fabiana Branco you've come looking for, I think she's up the hill. So why don't you just go get her? I don't know. I'm a cop. I mean, I'll fight corruption. I'll stand up to the rich and dumb, but if I go up that hill right now, I'll be dead in three minutes or less. Maybe you too, Max. You're in the jungle now. So it appears. If you survive the next hour, let's speak. You help me. And I'm gonna do what I can to help you. Good luck. I didn't know what to make of what this guy had just told me. What was true and what was just someone else's convenient bullshit. Then some less than friendly locals came in and found me in the wrong mood to party. E aí, Green? O que você está fazendo aí? Não compreende. Leave me alone. Você tem alguma coisa para mim? Do you got something for me? For you? I'll tell you what I got. I got a gun, and if anybody thinks they're gonna take it from me, they'd be dead wrong. I was running the risk of becoming too clear-headed. It was Monday afternoon, and I'd already been thrown out of a party, gone to a strip club, and got into a bar fight. This latest midlife crisis was certainly ticking all the boxes. The fireworks display was clearly in my honor, making sure everyone knew to roll out the red carpet for their surprise guest. was walking into another not-so-welcome party. These hoods didn't look like Commando Sombra. Not that I was gonna get picky. This was clearly their turf, and I'd just shot up their favorite skin joint. <laughs>
I was getting nowhere fast. The cold turkey was messing with me, like I was looking through another man's eyes. I needed to focus. I could hear a woman screaming. I thought I'd found Fabiana, but instead I'd stumbled across some testosterone fest. A bunch of young punks with guns killing time the only way they knew how. Nova Esperanza wasn't exactly a dinner and movie kind of place. I recognized the hoods who jumped me earlier. I was trying to decide whether to crash this party or turn back, when my natural grace and finesse made the decision for me.